you are you are on, on it. You are a guru. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, then. So this is the most fundamental, recognizable view of balance we all have. It's a gift to us that watch nature, that the way, the way nature balances teaches us the importance for it and as a, a core why. The second view of balance is the scripture verse that came with the topic that in Proverbs 11, 1, there are things such as a false balance and they are an abomination to the Lord. And there are things such as a just weight and they are a delight to the Lord. Coming from the nature example, you can see that when things are not right before God, they create abomination. That's a very strong word, but in truth, it is something that we should recognize hurts us. And it hurts our human connectedness and our God connectedness. There's a very interesting parallel to it in Proverbs 16, 11, where they also raise the issue of just balances and scales. And then the fact that the weights in the bag are his work. I want to just draw our, our mind to the fact that these terminologies are the terminologies of commercial transaction. That in the old days, if you went to buy something, they had a system of weights. And then there were commodities that they were trading. And the, the weights were governed were created by governments or, or special um, artisans so that they had a, a, the same weight. If they said it's one kilo, it's one kilo. And therefore, if you go to buy corn, a kilo of corn is a measurable um, commodity in, in volume or size so that you know you're being justly treated in the transaction. And a kilo of gold, will also have a different transaction uh, weight uh, uh, re relative to the simple kilo or volume. These just weights and scales, it is very interesting to note that the, God says they come from him. So when we are dealing with trade, we can be sure if there's a good balance and there are just weights, we get a peaceful result, something that if we use the, the word shalom, it comes not only with, as peace, but there's a richness to it about <laughs> the righteousness of it, about the, the, the well-being and the fulfillment it brings. That what results do they have for our balanced life as, as people outside of mere trading or commercial transactions, our interpersonal relationships and our goals and conduct in life also profit from having accurate weights and measures. If we look at the example where there's imbalance and the scripture was pointing out that there are false weights and unjust scales. I think we all know when you to buy Olunka of tomatoes on the roadside, that you have to check whether the bottom of the olunka is the real bottom or there's a false bottom in it. And as soon as you see that, you feel cheated. You, you, you are stressed out. The, the transaction is being carried out unjustly because of falsity. So dishonest uh, skills and weights are an abomination to God because they are counter to the nature and laws that he has set in place. If we took an example from the natural laws, you reap what you sow. So if you reap, if you sow to, to a good balance, you will reap shalom. If you sow to this type of imbalance, you will reap distress, unrighteousness, conflict, and several problems. So this second view tells us that we need to find the right weights and accurate balances that are from 
God's bag of, of weight, so to speak, and to transact in life, whether managing our own lives or our relationships with others in a way that is properly, um, properly measured so that there is fairness and justice. A third view of balance comes from the book of Amos. Uh, you forgive me as an architect for adding this one, but it's so illustrative, I couldn't resist it, that the Lord showed Amos a plumb line and the Lord was standing by a wall when he did this. And he asked Amos, what do you see? And Amos said, I see a plumb line. And the Lord said, look, I'm setting a plumb line among my people, Israel. I will spare them no longer. There's a suggestion about accountability in the issue of plums, in the issue of weights and scales. That means that we have to find the right standard in order to be sure we are plumb and that we are weighing properly. I threw this in because I think most of us don't know what a plumb line is. A plumb line is used in construction. You have what is called a bob, this um, gold or metal object here with a sharp point, and it's hung from a string from a point of reference. When you set it like that, the longer the string is, the more um, rotation like a pendulum that you get, and it gradually slows down until it centers on the point that gravity puts it. Now, if you had a wall, I imagine if there was a wall here where my cursor is and it's leaning, the plumb line would still be straight up and down like, like this, where my cursor is. So the plumb line responds to gravity and the the construction we are building, in this case, our lives and the balance in them, the plumb line will always find a point of reference that is for gravity. In this case, I want to pose it as the target red point, the word of God. If you build with a plumb that is straight up and down and you follow it, your wall will be straight. It will be not crooked. If you don't use the plumb line and you pull your life out by worldly pleasures uh, in whichever direction it goes, you see that your wall is following this line. It isn't plumb. And the danger of that is that it is leaning. It can easily fall over. So to create balance, plumbs are necessary and we need to look out for them. So a few practical questions. What is the plumb line of God for a believer's life? It is the eternal and unchanging word of God with its full range of applicability to every aspect of our lives. The second thing is what happens when your walls, the walls of your life are not plumbed. So you can see that the stress issues, you cannot be relied upon. Nobody can lean on you and be secure. Uh, you have a tendency to fall over or collapse in one or all departments of your life, and you are identified as crooked. What are the walls that we are speaking of? Somebody might use the word departments. So there's uh, God, there's family, your social connectedness, your work and career or finances, your character and values and ministry, there are many, many more walls, but let's use these to, to um, begin to, to gender your, your thoughts in your mind about the constituents of your life and the need to check their plumb, to check what weights you have been using to, to uh, weigh them and assess how you're doing before God. How do you plumb your walls? I think there's a need to build a constant reference check to the word of God, both your relation, horizontal relations and con the constructions, if I can call it that, and your vertical. And to be making 
daily, weekly, monthly, or annual adjustments until the blocks of those walls are rightly set in the wall and they can be firmed up. So I want to begin a time of exploration with you. And on the next slide, I'll introduce to you a series of pyramids. They are arranged with layers, if I can call it that, that would express some of the walls in a person's life. And they have arranged them in priority from the base up. I want to, you to ask the question of yourself, what does the pyramid communicate to you? What would be missing in an unbeliever's life and what difference would it make? So here's the first one. You see the pyramid built up. Um, oh, sorry. There is ministry, your social life, your working or career, your wife, or as I was duly corrected, your spouse and children, and God. These are just examples. Are there any other areas that could be added to express your life? I'd like you to take a minute and throw a few thoughts in. Um, maybe you can raise your hand and the host will, will take maybe three comments. Is the host Emmanuel or, or Felix? Uncle Ralph, you are the Uncle host. Ralph, you, you are the host. You are testing my technical ability too far. I haven't balanced that area yet. So what do you want to do? I want to uh, notice from the participants, any two or three who raise their hands and want to contribute to- yeah, I'll be I'll be watching. You don't need it. I'll be watching. If someone raises their hand, I'll let you know. Okay. It's still yeah. possible from the next slide, unless there's already a raised hand. There's no, there's no raised hands yet. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Maybe it will interest people more. So here's more variety. In this case, the same things, but they have been reordered. So the arrangements are different between the left pyramid and the right pyramid. So Philip has raised his hand. Yes. Philip, any uh, idea? Yes, can we add career to it? Okay, you could easily put work stroke career, otherwise you have too many areas to, to juggle. Okay. Any other? Hmm? You are going to do what? And you, you mute. I'm warming for you. The party. I'm warming it, okay? Now, here's another triangle. Okay. Philip, can you mute your, your mic now? Please, I have. Okay. So a question, what do you sense about balance from this pyramid? Oh. Does it look stable? It has no foundation at all. It has no foundation at all. It's hanging in the air. It's hanging in the air. Any other ideas? Would you feel comfortable sitting on top of this triangle, this pyramid? Okay. okay. Please, all those who are, uh, uh, their mics are, or can you mute yourself? 
Can you mute yourself? The distractions are too much. We beg you. Mr. Amwaku Chairman, sir, if you could mute yourself, Aklasu, if you could mute yourself, we'll be glad. Mr. Christian Aklasu, can you mute yourself? Ankara, you can proceed, sir. Okay, so a, a, a question I'm asking is, if you have a job responsibility or um, you want to give a ministry responsibility to the person who this pyramid represents, would you feel comfortable? And why or why not? Can we take some contributions? Daniel, you can contribute. Yeah. So for this person, clearly we can see that he doesn't have a balanced life, his life can easily talk to And if you give him any responsibility, you can be sure that his life is not in a stable state. He can, he can never deliver anything meaningful to the ministry. Hmm. Please, can, can the, whoever is unmuted, except for Amwakuche, please mute. That's Edward Bannerman, Edward Bannerman Wood, and Hustler. If you can just mute yourself, Edward and Hustler. Hustler, please. All right. So, Amwaku, you were sharing something. I think it was Daniel. Daniel Amani, Deacon. Daniel. Yes, I'm Craft. Can you finish what you're saying, please? Okay, so I was just saying this shows a person who has unbalanced life. His priorities are not set right. And if you entrust such a person with um, responsibility to a ministry, um, he may not be able to deliver as you will expect. Okay, so the follow up question is how can this person be counseled or helped to, what needs can the person do to attain a balance? The, the session can be quite interactive, so you can feel free to share, please. Uh, 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 uh. Uncle, I didn't hear your question again. I was saying that the question is up on the screen. I'd, I'd like some, some contributions from all of us as participants. How can balance be attained in this person's life? Uh, Marcus, Marcus, right. your hand is up. Yeah, my yeah. hand is up. Yeah. Yes, I think so they had necessary advices to reorder the, the individual's priorities. Uh, first of all, uh, try as much as possible to tilt the pyramid with the base down and then make God the foundation of the base. Move the social up, bring God down. Uh, that way he, that individual will begin to reorient himself and, and um, uh, prioritize things in a better manner. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Any other contribution? 
So somebody is asking, was the pyramid inverted on purpose? I believe I've seen cases where this has happened. And I think even in my own life at times, I've experienced things put in the wrong priority order so that one's life is not balanced. So yes, it was inverted on purpose for discussion. So Marcus raised a question. Do you want to share something? Uh, I, I've done that already. I, I, I hope I was heard. Yes, you did respond. Yes, thank you. So Marcus raised a question about reordering the priority. And he suggested making God the broadest base foundation and turning the pyramid the other way around. I, in, in this particular illustration, can you see the pressure that the family is under, right? Carrying everything else. What does it illustrate? What kind of tensions can you do you think would be happening in the family as a result of this? Uh, Pastor Alfred, Reverend Alfred, if you could mute oh. yourself. Uh, and the Annie and Dickness uh, will be glad if you mute yourselves. Dickness, if you could mute yourself, we'll be glad. Thank you so much. So the question again, what will the results of this imbalance have on this person's relationship with wife and children and their relationship with God? What do you think? Is it that you need more time to think or the question is not clear? Maybe some people are waiting for you to call them. <laughs> are there some? <laughs> are there some uh, hands up? No, no, no hands are up. But maybe they want you to call them to raise their hands or something. Okay. Um, I I can't find the list of participants yet. That by name. Ah, okay. I've got it. So. Um, uh, Deacon Wuva, would you like to share something on this? No, not ready yet. Okay, let's go on. If I could illustrate it for us, um, I can imagine how stressed out the family will be. They will be carrying the weight of this person's <laughs> life outside the home. They are, the, they are dependent upon to keep the person's physical well-being going. They cook, they clean, 
they support, if you're not careful, they even do all the finances and pay the bills at home, whilst the person is in, heavily involved in a social life outside. That would be this person's predominant contact with the world. And his, pep his purpose is being worked out there. He, he, he might work, he might bring his salary home, but he's not involved in caring for that foundation of his life. His relationship with God is also in pretty much the same. It's, it's being depended upon to carry a whole load ahead of him, but he's not investing in it adequately. So it's a rushed, quiet, personal quiet time. It, there's no personal growth in the word of God. The hearing of the, the leading of the Holy Spirit will be minimal in his life. He doesn't have priority for it. His whole investment of energy and, um, and passion is in the social work and ministry level of his life. Because of that, there is imbalance. And because of that, we've all started to, to recognize that it is difficult to really entrust the things he may be actually gifted and talented in doing in his social work and ministry life because the instability can easily crash the pyramid. There is another way sometimes that we try to attain balance, not necessarily by doing the first suggestion Marcus gave, which is turning the pyramid back so that it has a base and putting God at the base, but in which we start to spin the pyramid. The faster we spin it, the more it will stay apparently stable. So we go faster and faster and faster in life to try to keep the things all going well but it is an artificial stability and by all means as soon as we get tired of spinning the fall one way to or other to the side begins to show up in our lives and so it's very important to understand these things if we're going to work at creating a balance in our life that there are God-given things for stability and balance. They are weights, they are plums, they are balance, they are scales. And if we learn how to deploy them in the different departments of our life, we can then create balance properly. For most of the time, we, we are going so fast in life we, we, and are under so much pressure that we have not stopped to think about these things. And the, the pyramid builds up by, by default of life circumstances. And we are surprised that we are so stressed out and so involved in things in a way that drains us and there's no restoration going on. I want to invite us to do a personal exercise. So if you can take a screenshot of this, it will be good to keep it because I'm inviting us to look at our own lives with respect to these life walls and pyramids. If you were to draw your own pyramid, what would it look like? What is it looking like now? Because there's a difference between what we think we would like and what we are actually doing. And that difference must be reconciled as well, because if it isn't, the imbalance is inherent. It will stay there. What is in our head or what, what we think we are is different from what it actually is. In order to do this, I'm going to draw us back to an earlier slide. Um, in which we ask the question, if this pyramid were the pyramid of an unbeliever, what would be different? What wouldn't be there at all? 
Any suggestion? An unbeliever. Maybe the ministry will not be there. Ministry would not be there. Anything else? Um, God, God will also not be there. God will also not be, there. Also not be there. So maybe there will be football. <laughs> Any other things? Clubbing. The point I'm driving at is that you need to identify what your layers are and why as a Christian, your layers are different from those of other people. Other people are not believers because the responsibility of being a believer means that you have certain critical layers to include and balance in your life. And if you don't, if you, once you recognize that these are peculiar to you as a Christian, then you need to take special care to nurture them and integrate them in your full life. So when you draw your own triangle, what will the order be? Compare that to what it actually is now. So you, you are drawing two diagrams for yourself. Is it clear enough? I, I can Come again. You are drawing two paragraphs. One will be what, and the other. I'm drawing will be what? two two diagrams. Diagram. Mm -hmm. One okay. is what your life actually is now, and the okay. other one is what you would like it to be. What you think God would like okay. it to look like. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ralph, are you on? I'm on. I'm, I'm just pausing. I'm, I want to ask if anybody would like to share their diagram in terms of just verbalizing the first bottom one is this, the second, third, fourth, fifth. What are the basis of your, your um, pyramid? Anyone willing to share? I like to say my mind. Okay. I think the base should be God. Okay. And what comes after that? The family. God, family, work, ministry, and social. for sharing it. Would anybody else like to share? Okay. Um, mind uh, God, the base, family life, ministry, and since I'm full-time in ministry, so it's still work, and then social mm. work, uh, social life. That's the okay. way I would see mine. Yeah. Can we have one more person share? I, I think there's, there's, there's something in the chat. Okay. Somebody says, uh, that's Nick Nathaniel. Nathaniel says, the base is work, and then followed by social, then followed by family, God, and ministry. Okay. Thank you for all, all of you sharing like that. As, as people share, we all learn together. So I really encourage it when we do seminars like this, that feel free to share. 
Um, if we went to our last slide. The question is, are there any false balances or, or weights in how you order your life? Is there anything that is off plumb with respect to the word of God? How can you check that how you see your life now or how you want it to be has been plumbed to something God delights in? something that is strong according to the natural way God wants us to be. And that this order is something that you can aspire to back at, to make it stand in your life and help you carry out God's purpose for your life. What scriptures would you use to check the order of these these bases and walls or priorities that you have established. I'm asking this question because you'll notice everybody had a different order and they are an accumulation of our upbringing, our yeah. discipleship, our personal um, uh, understanding of scripture and if we do not take the time to check it, we could be living by something that is not exactly plumb with God and which we are not totally committed to because we do not have the deep convictions that this is how my life ought to be balanced and therefore apply the discipline, the commitment and the resources that are necessary to take something like this and turn it the right way in our life. It requires transformation. It requires persistence. It requires accountability in order to complete turning it over. For some people, it might be an easier job because they already have some measure of stability, but they may have the order wrong. It still requires work, but it's not as drastic as others. Whatever our situation may be, understanding the why is important for establishing the how. Next week, I'll be dealing with the how, but I want to ask you to look at this small home exercise. It's a week's record of your life. I'm calling it a time monitoring chart. How do you actually spend your time? I've done this exercise a few times and I think I'm always a little surprised at areas where I spend a lot of time but have never registered that this, this much time goes into this thing. What it reflects is what our values and our disciplines are like. So if you go through the week and you record, I've used this row, row to express uh, an ex example for sleeping time. So you go to bed at 11, you wake up at five, you spend six hours asleep. The next day it was going to bed at 10, you wake up at six, you had eight hours of sleep. When you finish that for the week, average it out, and you're seeing that you're getting about seven hours of sleep per week. Do it for your devotional life, for your personal care. This has to do with things like um, bathing, the time you spent bathing, uh, eating time, grooming yourself, etc. The time you spend commuting. So when you get in, a car, you go and join a, a, a tra traffic line. How long do you actually spend just in commuting? How long do you spend at work? How long do you spend? This one is a little difficult to monitor, but make a good guess. How do you, long do you spend on the phone? 
on TV, on the internet, and with the various social media. For a lot of people, they don't realize how much of a layer this is in their life. How much time do you spend in leisure, your personal development, studying, or whatever else you do, in ministry work, shopping, and the balance is unexplained time in your life. When you finish this at the end of the week, redraw the triangle that we discussed as to how your, your life really is and think it through. When we come back next week, I want to take us through a biblical basis for ordering our lives. It is not the only one. So it is only an example to stir your minds and get you to exercise that why into the reality of how you're going to make the changes. Then we will go through a number of um, principles and exercises on um, how to knit the life because it's, it's, not, it's not natural to keep the segments so clearly. They mix up and one side has an effect on another. So we want to see how these things play out in our life and how we balance them. I want us to look at the signs of balance and the warning signs of imbalance so you can notice them in your life and it can lead, open your eyes to something you need to work on that perhaps you are not aware of. And then I want us to look at how to find strength from God for working out the balance. And then we, we will close with another personal exercise on that day. And I hope this will has been useful to you, eye-opening, thought-provoking. And that when we meet next week, there'll be a lot more to contribute and share as we go along. So thank you. Any, we have a few minutes for a few questions before we end. Thank you very much. A big applaud for you, Uncle Ralph, for such an awesome presentation. Uh, we're so grateful to you. Indeed, it has been a, a thought-provoking uh, session. And uh, some of us are trying to find out how to tilt our pyramids. <laughs> Thank you very much. But any question or comments before we, we wrap up? We have just a few more minutes. Uh, any question? Anybody want to ask a question or comment? Well, Pastor Felix, I, I want to find out um, what is on the screen currently, the way you're served by time. Um, I have done a screenshot, but I'm wondering whether I'll be able to enlarge it and then print it out. So is it possible that something uh, can be sent to us by way of document that we can print it and then be able to use? Yes, uh, it should be possible. I'll confirm with Uncle Raf, and if I have to take that portion and then maybe send to all of us, I'll do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Okay, some there's some some there are some things in the chat. So we need to consider the portion of our life or time we spend on these segments uh, in the pyramid, in the pyramid. Okay. And then uh, another comment also said, uh, can we have the slides for our reference after the meeting? Okay. I just said I'll confirm with Anke Raven and see the possibility. Uh, Auntie Maggie says, the segment could be enhanced with situations that you come to a blockade and you need to get back to God. I'm not too sure what exactly, but, and uh, somebody says, that, thank you. I say, thank you, Uncle Raf. Uh, and somebody also says, Ayao, more interesting than I thought. Thank you, Uncle Raf. All right. Let me take the segments that can be enhanced with the blockade issue. That's what a blockade is a bit like uh, the drought picture we saw from nature. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the, the wages we reap 
from our imbalance dry us up and or or god puts something in our life to block us to help us come back to our attention with him and we'll be looking at some of that next week thank you auntie magi okay thank you uh, galaxy 20 your 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 mic is on if you are not contributing kindly mute yourself any other question or contribution way before we we take something from sp any other person want to say something okay and Garaf, maybe I, 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 I could take it as everybody is so satisfied probably with what you have presented. And uh, I'm sure next week when we come back, uh, uh, the feedback session will tell, mm. maybe with the assignments you have given on to us. Mm. All right. Uh, SB. Thank you, Amir. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're on the floor. If any comment before we close. Well, I, I think it's a very good exercise, and uh, what Uncle Ralph put at the end of it uh, helps 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 a lot. <laughs> when we we're, were quiet about the pyramid, uh, what was occurring to me is this: uh, sometimes we may not even know that our lives. I such a, if somebody showed you a real pyramid like this, you know it is dangerous. If your house were like that, you know it is dangerous. But we, we don't picture our lives to be like that. We always think we have a balance. Once our, we are on our two feet and we are walking, but I think the exercise at the end of it, weigh yourself back time will be helpful. So it's a very good session and I thank you him taking time to lead us and all of us and I open up if we choose to work at it God will help us uh, balance our life and give the right priority to the things that we really deem are important it's not easy to attain but as you see tilting to the one side to the neglect of other the Lord will help us and the plumb line come back to center. So that's my comment. It's a good session. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Are you not Thank able you to mute much. all of us? Next week, I'll do that. Yeah, today, Uncle Raf was there, yeah. so it was difficult ah, okay. to control. So Maybe I'll make him a focus. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. then I can control yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you yeah. all again. Uh, my number is 0244 uh, Feel free to send me comments and you can also follow up. Uh, uh, I mean, I'll let you have uh, the slide if okay, Ralph gives me the permission. But we are sincerely grateful yeah. to you for joining us uh, today. Next week, same time, at uh, 6 o'clock, we will be online. And so we want you to invite your friends and others to join us to have uh, this fellowship together. Uh, let's, let's, let's block some time to just uh, work on some of the assignments or the exercises, and let's begin to take stock of our life and see what we can do to better our lives. We shall surely balance. And you need to keep find your balance and keep the balance. May the Lord bless us all. Uh, can we pray together? So, Father, we want to thank you. As we thank you for our facilitator, Uncle Ralph, for such a thought-provoking uh, presentation. Father, we pray that we will not be the hearers of your word, but the doers thereof. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your grace will abound for us to reshape our life and put, put ourselves in balance, uh, just so that at all thank times we will you. believe you. May the rest of the week bring us to God good things and may your favor come upon our life. I thank you for all you've done for us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you Amen. all. God bless you. Amen. All. Uh, God, Amen. Bless God bless you. Bless you all.
Angara, if you can stop the recording. Okay. God bless you, Pastor Ralph. Yeah. All right.